the Negro preacher isn't telling you that you are being knocked down and dragged and hung and oppressed and exploited. He doesn't go into your suffering. He tells you about how somebody suffered 2,000 years ago. Or he'll tell you how somebody suffered in Egypt 4,000 years ago. Or he'll tell you how wicked the people were in Sodom and Gomorrah 5,000 years ago. But when it comes to dealing with this suffering and this wickedness right now, he starts... He, that's hate teaching. <laughs> But, brothers and sisters, you're intelligent. Why is it right for the Negro preacher to preach against the cruelty of Pharaoh, who was a slave master, and preach against the cruelty of Nebuchadnezzar, who was also a slave master, but at the same time, he says it's wrong when you point out the cruelty of this modern-day slave master. Why is it right for the Negro preacher to get in his church and tell you about the enslavement of the Hebrews in the land of Egypt and the enslavement and oppression of the Hebrews in the land of Babylon? But when you begin to talk about the enslavement of the black people in America today, that's hate teaching. If it's not hate teaching against Pharaoh and it's not hate teaching against Nebuchadnezzar, then it's not hate teaching today against this modern Pharaoh and this modern Nebuchadnezzar. A man here, anytime you can be hungry and naked with no decent house to live in, and you will stand up and let someone tell you to suffer now, because later on, by and by, in the sky, uh, <laughs> You're dealing with a very influential man. Anytime you can, uh, you will allow yourself to suffer the pangs of hunger now and be satisfied because some collar-wearing backward man is going to tell you that you will get your fill after you die up in the sky somewhere. I say that man has a lot of influence over your weak mind. somebody walking up to the man with his hat in his hand. You don't want somebody walking up to the man afraid to open up his mouth and tell the man how you feel. You don't want somebody that's going to tell you how the Hebrews suffered in the land of Egypt and the Hebrews suffered in the land of Babylon and is afraid to tell the black right man today that these black people here are tired of suffering in this day and time. You go into China and find a Chinaman that believes in Jesus and ask him to paint a picture and he'll paint Jesus looking like a Chinaman. You go up to Alaska and find an Eskimo that believes in Jesus and ask him to paint a picture of Jesus, he'll paint a picture of Jesus looking like an Eskimo. You come back here to America and find a white man that believes in Jesus, he'll paint Jesus looking like a white man. Go inside a Negro church who believes in Jesus and ask them to paint a picture of Jesus, they'll paint a picture of Jesus looking like the white man. That's what you call integration. Well, that kind of integration don't move us, brother. Right. <laughs> Not nowadays. It was all right for grandma, because she didn't know an A from a B. But you call yourself educated today. You call yourself having gone to school and gotten what we say your boots links. And you come out and still have to get your boots from your master. 